during a demonstration on Edwards Air Force Base, the 419th Flight Test Squadron showcased the B-1B Lancer strategic bomber can indeed carry weapons externally. Uh, so we have a JASM weapon on the, traditionally the targeting pod pylon on the forward right hard point. So we are demonstrating uh, that the B-1 has the capability to carry weapons and employ them externally uh, for the first time to my knowledge since the, uh, really the 1980s. This capability is not new for the B-1. It's actually a return to its roots. The original design features six hard points under the fuselage to which weapon carrying pylons can attach, a critical capability for the bomber's original Cold War era nuclear threat role. The B-1, as it's currently fielded, is already one of the most lethal platforms in the fleet. It's the only supersonic bomber in Air Force inventory, and it has the highest payload capacity. Combine those stats with ground troop comforting, long loiter times, and a sweat wing design flexibility, and it's no surprise the bone has well over 12,000 combat sorties. Time and again, it has proven its effectiveness, making it a top choice of commanders, but meeting all that demand has taken its toll, leading the Air Force to explore ways it can safely squeeze the most effectiveness out of the B-1 as it enters the back end of its service life. Reactivating these hard points will not save the 17 oldest B-1s from their looming retirement, nor will the entire Lancer fleet be upgraded. For those few jets lucky enough to undergo the refitting, if and when that decision is made, it will be a significant boost to firepower. However, when paired with an expanded internal weapons bay, the B-1 not only gives a 50% boost to fire volumes, but also has potential to carry the hypersonic weapons of the not-so-distant future. This demonstration is a vital bridge between the bomber force of today and the force of tomorrow.